Uh, my name is Liana Benning. I am uh, a researcher at the Geoforschungszentrum in Potsdam and I study processes at mineral microbe fluid interfaces. I'm always saying I'm, a, I'm born in the United States of Europe because I lived in seven different countries of Europe and uh, I studied in Germany just for my four diploma for a few years and that was the only time I lived in Germany before. Then I moved to Switzerland, America, I lived in Holland a little bit, I lived then for 17 years in the UK and then I was headhunted to move to the GFZ where I started in the end of 2014. And uh, so it's the classic uh, trajectory of a scientist who uh, wants to do the best science in the best places possible, and that's what brought me to the GFZ. So I actually look at many different things, but if you think of any chemical, physical, or biological reaction, these all happen at a surface, at an interface. So whether you have uh, a microbe living on a mineral or a mineral being dissolved by water, whether you have snow melting through biology or just the input of sun, all reactions happen at interfaces. But we don't understand how uh, the fundamental chemical and physical and biological mechanism affect or and are affected by these interfaces. And we need to study these at what is called the molecular level. That means we need to uh, use technology which can look at how bonds are made or broken and how atoms move and how atoms interact, whether the atom is a living atom in a microbe or a dead atom in a mineral. So this interaction is what we are studying in the group. But we have different projects, starting from projects which we do in Greenland, where we try to understand how different particulates or microbes affect the melting of the green ice sheet to projects where we try to understand the fundamental processes of how from simple chemical components we can make minerals or phases. So how from solution or from melts you actually make the ground you walk, you walk on. We assume we know how earth functions but we don't know how it forms. So we try to understand the fundamental processes about these reactions. As you know, the Arctic is the fastest changing uh, environment in our planet in terms of uh, as a consequence of climate change. We have global warming and uh, in the Arctic the average increase in mean annual temperature has reached the two degree tipping point of the Paris Agreement. The consequence of that is that the melting of the Greenland ice sheet is accelerating and it's at a rate which has, is unprecedented. What happens is that when ice melts, as you know from just when you have a drink, uh, it's actually a matter of temperature. But in Greenland, ice melts not just because we have an increase in temperature, but also because we deliver through anthropogenic sources. We deliver, for example, soot. This is from, from fossil fuel burning. We deliver desert dust, which comes from just the fact that it's getting put in the atmosphere and transported. But what we study is the fact that on this snow and ice, you have actually living microbes. You have algae and bacteria, which are living there and they only live there, they're only happy there. But the important thing is they are pigmented, they have color. And if you think about a hot summer's day where you wear a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt, when you wear a black t-shirt, you are hotter. That means with pigmented bacteria and algae, the snow and the ice will melt faster. And we are studying uh, the diversity and also to understand what these microbes do and what their effect is. Because the melting of the green and ice sheet is accelerating and these algae are actually just doing what they are happy with. You give them more melting, they are happy. It's not their fault that we melt, the, we increase the temperature, but it's a consequence. But we don't know how to, to put the, the values of how fast, how much faster do they melt the ice into a model to predict how this is going in the future because we don't understand how it is affecting something at the level of the green and ice sheet. Currently in models the only thing you have is uh, melting of the snow and ice and the input of what is called black carbon or soot. But there is no value in models which at the moment takes into consideration biology because we are the first ones who actually develop the base ground information to actually understand who's there, how much is there, and what effect do they have on biology. 
And for me, what drives me is a chemical pattern. So I'm looking at the chemical pattern in nature. And whether that chemical pattern is driven by biology, by chemistry, or by anything, that's irrelevant. But it's primarily curiosity and um, I don't like to be bored. And for me, science allows me to explore avenues which takes away boredom, if I put it bluntly. Uh, a big, I mean, I go on expeditions because I, go to li I like to go to nice places. I don't co go to expedition to un not nice places, put it that way. But we also do a lot of experimental and laboratory work, so a big part of my group does experimental work. But uh, when I'm allowed to go on expedition, I go to nice places, yes. Um, in Greenland for the last two years, uh, life is um, challenging, but also interesting because you have to camp. You camp on the ice sheet, so we are flying in with a helicopter about 30, 40 kilometers inland, and you have to sleep in a tent on the ice. Uh, this year we were a bit unlucky because we had lots of snowstorms, so it was, we were expecting for the snow to melt, and then it melted, and then the next snowstorm came in. So there, there are challenges, but it is the most beautiful, surreal, serene, exciting, exotic place and I always say I would beg Rob and steal, and I do beg Rob and steal to go back every year. This year I'm going to Antarctica, and that will be different because Antarctica is a very different challenge. It's much more extreme, and I will be staying in a station where going outside will be a bigger challenge, but actually you have the luxury to be warm in the evening and take a shower, where in Greenland we didn't have that. We had to take a shower with a little bucket, so it's very different. Benefit is uh, first uh, understanding how a reaction at the more fundamental system of a single microbe can affect a global scale process. Uh, in order to be able to predict how fast, for example, the green ice sheet will melt and therefore how fast, for example, our sea level rises, we need to understand why it melts. And we don't have the right parameters to predict that. At the moment, predictions from the IPCC go anywhere from six to seven meters in the next hundred years. But those predictions vary by orders of magnitude because we, we don't have the ground truthing from analysis and measurements on the ground around Greenland. We mostly have one point to actually be able to parameterize these things better. We have been on this planet for more than 500 years and we are way smarter now and we should be able to not kill our planet and basically induce our own massive uh, sort of like destruction and therefore have another, because we had over the, the course of the geologic history, we had lots of extinctions. I hope we are not extinguishing ourselves. You're probably expecting me to say the normal thing, oh, I love my family and I love my thing, which is, which is the truth for everybody. But life worth living for me is a combination of uh, obviously the usual friends and family, but also excitement of doing something which I can see potentially not just a benefit for myself, because we are not egoists, we are part of a we culture. And unfortunately, many people think of me, 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 and I think for me life worth living is if we think about a we. I work in Greenland. And I complain the fact that we're producing too much uh, black carbon, we are producing too much climate change. However, I have to fly to Greenland. I have to take a helicopter to Greenland. So that means my carbon footprint is, as a scientist, going to different places will be high. Change our way of living. Like, for example, I moved from the UK to the Germany and I now do not have a car. At the moment, that is my contribution. If I need a car, I can rent it. I fully understand that many people can't live that way, but that's fine, but everybody has to contribute their own way. Yes, Germans are very orderly, they are very on time, which is beautiful, but efficiency, maybe it's also, and combined with bureaucracy, is the bane of my existence. That is the one thing which if that could, somebody could take that away, I would be in heaven. I can be extremely happy if I finish a task which I set myself, which I've procrastinated for a long time. 
I can be very happy when uh, I get a grant funded. I can be very happy when I'm out of here and going on vacation and not seeing people for three weeks. I can be very happy when I have a family gathering and I see my friends and family. Uh, but I can also be happy uh, literally when I see the success of my people, of them having produced something which they have worked very, very hard on, and you see the smile on them. I can be happy when I teach and the students get it. Maybe very good at lying myself that I'm never sad. I try to figure out how to not be sad. What I normally wish for most is for the people who I mentor and I work with in my group to be successful. I would want to be a bird for two weeks and a fish for another two. Well, maybe not a fish because fish, I would say a whale because they travel long distances. And maybe I would say a migrating bird because I would like to see the world from above and from underneath. The Big Bang. Lots of worms will be happy. And you told me to bring one tool for my work. And I brought a snow shovel because we use that to collect samples. And the interesting thing was that he was there with his family. And so that actually the kids were the, count the contrary to uh, basically my snow shovel. And I, I'm I wonder what you asked him to bring because obviously he brought his family.